Hello and welcome to Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. A weekly podcast and YouTube channel where we discuss all things Wrexham AFC from the point of view of long-term fans and new fans. So sit back, put your feet up, relax and let's get stuck in. Hello and welcome back to episode 63 of Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. Exciting news today, isn't there? There is. So our YouTube channel, we have been grabbing and striving to get to 1,000 subscribers. And today... We did it! Finally got there, so we got to 1,000 subscribers. So a, a real moment for us that we thought... We thought this podcast would do okay when we started, yeah. but we didn't ever think we were going to get right up there to a thousand subscribers. It's amazing. We just want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to us over the last year and a bit since we started. It's taken a little bit longer can than I just, we thought. Can I just show? Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know whether you can see this, but... Uh, we, if thousands... you're listening to the podcast, you definitely can't Yeah, see I'm holding it, up but... my phone and it says a thousand sub- subscribers, so yay! Yes, so yeah, like I say, we just want to say thank you so much to all 1,000 of you. And here's to... to... I just want to say a, thank, a massive thank you. Well, uh, thank you to everybody who's obviously shared our YouTube channel and everything like that and all our episodes. Um, but I just want to say a big thank you to Chris and Adrian, yes. a.k.a. Two Beards. Yeah. Um, they have done the last push for us today yeah. on their Twitter. So thank you so much, guys. You are just legends. Yeah, there, there's loads of people. I know, I know my mum and dad did a little push yeah, for us to get, to get people. Like I say, Chris and Adrian did the last little push for us, they didn't did. they? So, yeah, thank you to everyone. It is thank so appreciated. Thank you very much. It is massively appreciated. It. Proper chuffed. Proper chuffed. Proper chuffed. That that's cue the cue loads of messages from uh, Americans asking what proper chuffed is. <laughs> <laughs> More than happy. No, to. I think we've said that before. And I think have people, we? Yeah, I think oh, people, people have like we're yeah. happy, guys. We're, we're happy. happy. Yeah. Very happy. Um, so welcome to Wrexham. <laughs> yep. Um, so we had episodes two and three. Was we that did. right? Two the and quiet three. Quiet zone and not yet. So. Quiet Zone. Uh, Let's talk about that one first. That was episode two. So we are back to two episodes a week. Love it. Yes. Uh, Back down to 20-ish minutes for Mm. the episodes. What do you prefer? The longer 40-odd minutes ones? Because it's the same amount of time. Do you like the longer ones or do you like the shorter ones but getting two of them? We were actually on another podcast just on Saturday. Yes. um, And I actually said on there that I... I really want them just to be all available now so that I can binge watch them. Yeah. But then obviously we had the discussion and it said, well, it kind of makes it a bit more exciting that they're on once a week. Yeah. Um, but I'm still like, I want them to stream more. But um, I think I prefer the longer episodes. But when the when the longer episode's finished, I'm like, oh, I want another episode. So I, I don't know. It's a bit of a tough one. It, that. It's like going back to being a kid, though, isn't it? Back in the days when you you literally there was no streaming. No. You literally you recording. Had, no. You had to wait a week at a time to watch something. Um, and uh, the podcast we were on yesterday was the Wrexham Texan, yes. by the way. Um, so, it, it, you know, we'll, we'll, we will send that out on our social media so you can have a little watch of that when that come out, comes out. Yep. Um, but we were talking about it. It's, you know, it's like being back in the day where you had to wait. There was no streaming, nothing like that. And I think it does make it a little bit more exciting. Yeah, You know, I because guess. I think we mentioned on that show that there are shows that we see on, um, I don't know, Netflix or or, uh, Amazon Prime or Disney Plus or iPlayer, where we look at it and go, oh, that's quite interesting. And then we go, we watched that. (laughs) But because we binged it in like one day, it's that you've got no memory of it. So I do like the fact that. I do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like you said, the first one was The Quiet Zone. Yeah. Um, And it focused very much on, on Millie. 
who is... Uh, Millie and Albie, and Albie. Paul Mullen's yeah, little but, boy. Yeah, yes, but uh, I think it's sort of very much focused on Millie, who's who's amazing. She's Millie a legend. Is. She is indeed. She is. And, um, and like you very rightly say, Paul's, uh, Paul's son, Albie, as well. Yeah. Um, we learned a little bit more about that. Um, I struggled with this episode a little bit, if I'm honest, in the sense of... Um, I think as a parent, you sort of... Um, I think you you feel a lot of guilt a lot of time as a parent. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a natural thing. You know, when you get, especially when you work full time and you get to the end of a weekend and you go back to work, you know, and I, as I've mentioned many times, I work shifts and you sort of wonder, have I spent enough time with my child? Have I been, you know, accommodating to my child? My child wants to show me something. Have I been, has my full attention been on what he wants to show me? Or am I just too tired to listen? Or am I not interested enough? And and that's where I think a lot of guilt yeah, comes from as 100%. a parent, you know. And when you see stories like this, you realise that, it, there are parents out there who put in so much effort and so much work and don't complain about it. And that's where my guilt comes from sometimes. Yeah. Where you go, you know, I, I have it a lot easier. You know, it, life can be so much more difficult. Yeah. And, you know, there are people who have it, you know, more difficult and they... they, they Get on, on with, with it. it. Yeah. And then sometimes you go, am I really doing everything I can do to be the best person, dad, husband? You know, and it, it, it sort yeah. of makes you start to question yourself a little yeah, bit sometimes. It does. So that's why I struggled with this episode yeah. a little bit. Because it made me It was emotional. It was an emotional one, but I think it was it made me look at me a little bit more. Yeah. Which which is the the thing that I sort of struggled with. I don't like looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was it was a great episode. It was. I think. And the one bit that really stood out for me was when Millie said, "Autism is not a disability. Yeah, it's a superpower." And that just hit me right in the heart. I just thought, Do you know what? If everybody looked at it in that same way through the eyes of people like Millie, yeah, then the world would be. A much better place. It would. And, and seeing Paul getting choked up as well when he was talking about his son was, was quite touching as well. Well, yeah, it just shows emotional. that he's just a human being like everybody else. He goes through the same parenting issue. Well, obviously, they, he has it a little bit more difficult because of um, his son's diagnosis. But, mm. you know, he is human at the end of the day. And if he doesn't score any goals, then... Yeah. At the end, and you could tell just watching Paul on the documentary, that although he loves scoring goals, yeah. he loves being part of Wrexham, um, but at the end of the day, the reason why he decided to come to Wrexham was because, purely because of his family, and yeah. he loves the fact that he gets to go home every night and and see his son, you know, and spend time with his son and his wife, and I just, I, I just, I, do you know what, I love Paul more than I did before I watched the episode. But, do you think that fight, I was going to ask that, funny you should mention that, uh, do you think that sort of puts to bed the whole rumours that he came for the money, or do you think opposition fans who do see that are still going to be a little bit like, oh, no, we still come for the money. Oh, yeah, 100%, because you, you're always going to get sceptical people out there. Yeah. But, you know, as Wrexham fans, the people of Wrexham, yeah. we know that Paul Mullen is, he, he's just literally, he's, I think the reason why people connect with him so much is because he is like a lot of people in Wrexham. Yeah. He is working class, you know, he's from a working class family. Um, he, you know, he... He's just, I, I don't, I can't even put into words because he's just so down to earth. And the amount of time that he gives to Millie when she's, you know, waiting for him to go into the, you know, he's not the only one who does no, that. No, no, I'm not saying he is, no. but they've got, they've got that connection. Yes. And hopefully now, when obviously James McLean is, um, is in the team, yeah. his daughter has also been diagnosed with autism yeah. as well. So I just hope that he kind of, 
you know, does the same as what Paul Mullen does. And, you know, all the other all the other team members, you know, and yeah. even Parky. Well, we did. Um, we did uh, another podcast. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. We did a Wigan Athletic podcast. Do you remember when we played them in the uh, Carabao Cup? Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, the guy on there was talking to us about James McLean. And he was talking yeah. very much about his the public image that he, James McLean has. Mm -hmm. And he said, one thing you will notice with James McLean is he he will very much start to do a lot of charity work and he'll be very active in the community as well. So I think it's it's one to look out for. Well, that. yeah, 100%. I think, you know, people or, or you know, everybody is not going to like everybody, let's face it. No. But it just, you know, I just, it well, irritates me. When <laughs> I do, I, it does. It irritates yeah. me. Um, and yeah, I just I just love the episode. I think it was just. There's been some negativity around, um, sort of specifically that episode, I think. There are, there are a few people, I don't think Wrexham fans, more fans of the documentary, who have been, um, the negativity surrounding the fact that there's not much actual football in, in the episodes, um, in the sense of we're focusing too much on the people and not enough on the football. What do you make of that? Absolute tosh, yeah. to be honest. Yes, you know, there isn't as much football as there was last season. Last, um, last season's well. Having said that, we can't really say that because we're only a couple of episodes we are, in, aren't we? We are, but if you... Uh, this is going to sound quite harsh, but if you want to watch reams and reams and reams of football, yeah. go to YouTube, watch highlights of the game. Yeah. At the end of the day, the way the Wrexham FX have decided to... Um, you know, present this series, the season, is you know they you know people want to get to know the people of Wrexham. Yeah, I think I think very much. I'm a I was a massive fan of uh, Sunderland Till I Die, which was on Netflix. I loved that. I watched that when you were on work. Yes, yes yeah, I yeah. Did. It's very good, and um, th there's not massive amounts of football in that. No, the the, the documentary is very much centered around the fans and the inner workings of a club with a sprinkling of the football over the top. And I think that's very much what we've got. I you think know. we can safely say that the, you know, the Boreham Wood game is going to be quite... Heavily featured, it yeah. is. And so is the Notts County game. Yeah. There are other games in that season which are going to be yeah. heavily featured. Yeah. Um, so. But we are, like you said, we're on episode three at the moment. So, yeah. so yeah. Like, everyone calm down. Yeah. Just enjoy the ride. You know, it's it's nice getting to learn about people in the community. Definitely. You know, but one guy I, I read, he said, oh, we want all the, you know, where's all the, the characters from the community? Well, we've just had a whole episode about sort of Millie, really, and her autism. She is one of the characters from this town, you know. But they're not characters, No, 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 no. no. I know that's what he said. No, but... I, don't mean, I don't mean it in the sense of a character. I mean, you know, like, oh, he's a bit of a character. Uh, that, right. That's what I mean. So, And, and she is. She's, She's well. She... she is well known around Wrexham. And well liked as yes. well. You know, so so to why have not a... have, let her have a, exactly. an episode about exactly. her? So we thought you were amazing, Millie. Well done. And yeah, we love you. Yes, we yes. do. Um, episode three. Yes. Not yet. Not yet. Um, it was sort of introduced in Notts County because we know what happens in the season don't we Let, let's, not, yeah. let's not beat around the bush so this episode was sort of introducing Notts County as a title rival wasn't yeah, it really yeah, yeah. Um, so um, we lost the first game that we played against them 1-0 um, I remember that game I remember watching that game and I very much r remember that we probably should have won that game. Like many others. Yeah, we did have <laughs> quite a few chances. Um, yeah, so it, it was one. It was one of the games that I thought it was. It was a missed opportunity for us mm -hmm. last season. Yeah, I think we should have been coming away from that game with at least a point. Um, did we do enough to win it? Maybe not, but we'd certainly had the chances there to win it. I think so. Yeah, and. I mentioned Adrian and Chris earlier on from Two Beards. Yeah. Well, Chris had... No, it wasn't Chris. It was Adrian. It was Adrian. <laughs> Sorry. 
Adrian had a cameo in the uh, second, a third episode of Welcome to Wrexham. He certainly did. He got his face on the docu. He did. He did. But we literally had to, it was like for about... Two seconds. Uh, not even that, I don't think. It was two seconds. We were watching it and I, was, and I went, I'm sure that was Adrian. Let's get that back. We re rewound it and it was like... That is definitely Adrian. How has he got his face on this documentary? But yeah, no, it was it was great. I love seeing people on a do on this documentary. The thing I really love is seeing people that you know. Yeah. And then you go, I know them. Yeah. I know them. Yeah. And it was it was really good to see his uh, to see his little and cameo. I, actually, talking of um, Adrian being on it, um, I listened to Chris and Adrian's Two Beards podcast. Yes. That came out on Friday. Go check it out. Um, and they actually were talking about obviously um, Adrian's cameo. And it weirdly it was way before. Yes. They were they became yeah, yeah, yeah. two I'm, beards. Yeah, I watched that. It wasn't their actual official episode. Oh, no, it, was it was just the just the one review in reviewing yes, it. And yes. and a lot of people had asked Adrian where was Chris? And then they were like, Well, it's before we even knew each yeah. other. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Um t t talking about two beards, not to get too hung up. Um next week they <sighs> will be joining us on this podcast next week. Um so yeah, so keep an eye out for that one for the that whole episode. Episode. Yes, they will indeed. Um, we've got an amazing guest coming up today. Uh, so we yes, do. Yeah, I'm excited about today. Uh, yes, yes, so am I. Um, so uh, w uh, the other sort of standout moment uh, from episode three, I would say, was sort of Mullin and Toza having a go at each other at half time. Yeah, Mullin didn't pass to Toza. Toza felt he really should have. You were quite shocked, weren't you, when you watched that? You went, oh, oh my god, is well, that? Well, yeah, because you kind of get this idealistic view that they're like you know in the in the dressing room yeah parky's talking they're all like you know hugging each other going yeah you know giving each other the g's um the g's yeah g'ing them up oh gee, right okay. yeah um but then when you see something like that uh, you know uh, mullen angry yeah and toza angry you're like oh my god i reckon uh, to be honest, that happens more than you think. That is a football dressing room. People yeah. go, why did you do that? Why didn't you do that? And and it's good to get that out as well and not let that fester. That will happen a lot more. Look, I doubt it happened loads and loads last season because we won all the time. Yeah. But there are going to be moments when that definitely happened. 100%, yeah. whether they show it or not, that definitely happened on uh, in that dressing room. I, yeah, I can guarantee I mean, I think, you that. Uh, yeah, I think I've had a reality check going, you know, they're not all... Yeah, it's not always sunshine. Not all and, incense and lovely uh, yeah. dancing around a pole in it, the changing room. It's stuff. certainly not. And hugs. And hugs and kisses. Hugs and kisses. Yeah, no, no, it's certainly not. Um, we've seen a lot less of Rob and Ryan, I, I would say, in this season. We are. But we seem to be seeing a little bit more of Humphrey. Oh, my God, I love him so much. Humphrey's brilliant in it so funny it is funny and i i really like it sort of it, they sort of juxtapose rob and ryan rob and ryan are these these sort of you know very positive american sort of like that that sort of mentality humphrey's very british really he is very british <laughs> he's very british i love the way that he explains things and the way he gives his honest opinion i think humphrey's great yeah um, we love humphrey yes yeah definitely so it's guest time it is as guest we time. said um, we i'm not sure we want to but we have to talk about the stockport game um, I'm yeah. not sure. Just bear with us because I don't want people turning off in droves uh, <laughs> when we're going, oh, my God, we're talking about the Stockport game. Yes, it was a nightmare. Uh, it was an absolute calamitous nightmare. But we're going to talk about it all the same. Yeah, yeah, I think it's good to talk about games, you know, the good and the bad. It is. So yeah. we've got Tommy on uh, this week. Now, most of you will know Tommy without maybe realising that you know Tommy. So Tommy's on Twitter, uh, he's a reporter, and he is better known as Tommy Kaus uh, on, on Twitter. So uh, it Kaus cheese in Welsh? Kaus is cheese. Tommy, is that because of the Tom and Jerry thing? Or, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Or does he, does he like cheese? We'll have to, we'll have to ask him. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Tommy, welcome to the show. How are you doing? 
Really well, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me on. Um, you know, I've, I've been a fan of, of the podcast. I've listened a few times and uh, yeah, you guys do a great job. So thank you very much. No, not a problem at all. Not a problem. Right. Stockport game. Uh, where do we start? What? <laughs> where do we start? I don't know. Do you think it was just a blip or, or do you think there's anything there that we, we sort of really need to worry about? Do you know what? When, when you asked me, uh, obviously to come to come on this pod, I was I was a bit wary. I was thinking the Stockport game. This could be a bit of pretty depressing pod, to be honest. Like, but but yeah, I I think um, I've got to be honest. It, it was a game. It was I I was looking at that and thinking this is probably the hardest game of the season. Um, now Stockport haven't had you know a fantastic start to the season, but. Uh, I, I I just always feel that Stockport really really up their game, um, you know, against Wrexham. So uh, so it was always going to be a tough one. I think it. I personally think it is a bit of a blip. We were so good against Grimsby. Um, the Grimsby performance was was outstanding. Um, so I, I do have full faith that that lads can that can bounce back. But um, but yeah, it, it, by the sounds of it, it wasn't good. I have to say. It's the first game of the season that I've missed as well. I wasn't there yesterday, but um, my friends who I spoke to on the phone last night, um, they all said it, it was not good at all. No, I mean, it was good early pressure. I mean, we probably looked like the better team, I would say, for the first sort of 20-odd minutes, the most likely to score. And then out of nowhere, they went 1-0 up and it sort of completely knocked the stuffing out of us, yeah. I, I, I would say. Um, they got the second one, um, a Toza uh, mistake, really, I suppose you'd say. Uh, it, you know, the little, little back pass from Boyle, I'm not sure what he was doing. Tommy, with regards to Toza, I've, I've been having a look on Twitter today and he seems to be getting a lot of abuse online and people saying, you know, why is he still in the team? What, what's your thoughts on, on Ben Toza? Well, I, I think it's unfair. I really do. I I, I sort of um, you know I see a lot of criticism, and it's it's not it's not just after yesterday. It's been going on for a long, long time. But um, but no, I think I think Toza does a lot that perhaps you know a lot of people don't see. Um, now now you know far be it from me. I'm not pretending to be more knowledgeable than anyone else when it comes to football. But I feel like Toza is an act is a leader. Um, he he, he organises defence. He marshals defence really well. Um, obviously, he provides loads of assists every season through uh, through his throw-ins and things like that as well. I, I you know, I, I think he is capable of having a bit of a bit of a stinker every now and then. He is capable of that. Let's be honest about it. But no, I think um, I think Toza deserves his place in the side. And you know, uh, don't get me wrong, we've got some excellent defenders. You know, O'Connell, for example, can't get a kick at the moment, but. Uh, for me, I think I think it'd be really harsh to drop Ben Toza. There's a reason why Phil Parkinson uh, keeps faith in him, and that's because I I I believe that he's a really really important part of the side. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I certainly don't think um, uh, Parkinson's going to drop him now. We do have to remember though, Ben Toza has just recently lost his dad, and I know. People say, well, he shouldn't be playing, if it, but he hasn't. I don't think he's grieved properly for his dad. I don't think he had any time off. No. Where, after his dad passed away. That is true. That is true. But I think, you know, like what, like what Tommy was saying then, you know, he's, I think in his locker, he's always got a bit of a bad game. I, I would agree with that. I think that's always there. But he's not the only one in that team no. who's got that in their locker. And I think, unfortunately, maybe Saturday... He was the every, only one that stood out. Uh, a maybe lot. a little bit, uh, you know, he, he stood out a little bit. But let's be honest, James McLean did not have a good game yeah, on not, Saturday. People aren't happy with James McLean. No, he did the not have a good team. So, so I, think, I think the one thing with Wrexham fans sometimes is they do... They like a scapegoat, Rex and <laughs> yeah. fans do. And I think that sometimes they pick one person out and they go, right, you are the reason that... that and then everyone else jumps on the bandwagon. Yeah, I think so a little bit. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would uh, you know, I d would definitely agree that... You That's know. when I think that social media can be quite toxic. And I just think that yeah. people need... You know, we've said it before on, um, on our podcast that at the end of the day, yeah, they're footballers. Yeah, they get... I mean, they don't get paid thousands like Premier League football. They do did. get paid thousands. <laughs> All right. I mean, like, you know, six figures a week. Yeah. I mean, um, they are human. And, you know, yeah, definitely. people having a go at Ben Toza, um, it just, 
it annoyed me, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, definitely. Um, I think Louis Barry um, scored the third. He sort of dribbled around what felt like the whole team. Um, he went like round Aaron Hayden as if he wasn't there. Yeah, uh, and then uh, and then yeah, basically he scored. Um, uh, Tommy, what do you think about uh, Aaron Hayden uh, at the moment? Do you think he's completely on his game, or do you think he looks a little bit off it? Well, I, I mean, the thing with Aaron Hayden is, and and you know, I've heard a few whispers here and there. Um, you know, th there's always whispers that you know perhaps he's. He's, 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 you know, he's always carrying a bit of a niggle. He's, he's never quite, you know, a hundred percent, and he's, he's never more than one or two games away from, from an injury, you know, and, and, um, it's a shame because what, what an absolute player, by the way, what a, what a player he is. He's absolutely outstanding. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm not too sure. I, only, I think perhaps only Phil Parkinson and Alan Hayden would be able to tell you that. Um. But yeah, certainly I think um, you know Aaron Hayden is so important. We're we're so lucky to have these uh, outstanding defenders, and, and we've literally got five or six superb, superb centre halves. But at the same time, yeah, I, I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little bit concerned with with Aaron Hayden, and um, you know I'm I'm always uh, what what's strange? I always think what's strange with Aaron Hayden is. You'll hear Phil Parkinson say, "Oh, he's 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 suffered a nasty injury. You know, he could be out for a while." And and then you you know you're preparing yourself for six weeks off, and the next thing he's lining up the next week, and you're like, well, "What's that all about?" You know. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not too sure. I, I really don't know what the deal with Aaron Hayden is. One thing I do know is he's su he's such a vital player that you know whenever he is fit, he will always be on the team sheet. It's as simple as that. You know, um, Owen O'Connell, I think, is a, is an excellent defender, but he's not quite in that category. Uh, he's not quite at the same level as Aaron Hayden. So, um, you know, as I say, it's great having all these defenders, all these excellent defenders. But, you know, Aaron Hayden, for me, is, is when he's available, first name in the team sheet. I just hope he can avoid injury because, like I say, it's ever since he's joined the club, he has he's missed large, uh, large chunks of the season. And uh, it, it's cost us, you know, it's cost us in the past. So fingers crossed he can get over that. Yeah, is he still your favourite? He is. I love Aaron Hayden. I really do. Um, I, I'm, I'm sort of a, a similar mindset. It worries me. If he gets another big injury this season, I think you've realistically, you've got to look at, uh, his long-term future and I oh, I feel horrible saying it but you know you can't have a player at, at a team that's going to miss half of every season yeah. you just can't you can't work around that you need stability in that defense and I love the man I really do and but um, I just I, I'm just hoping he gets through the full season let's move on before you start crying <laughs> yeah, okay right so we were three nil down at half time um do do you think that was an opportunity for Parky to like change it up a bit um and try something a bit different because it was felt very much like it was fingers crossed and let's hope they respond to the half time team talk yeah, I, I saw a lot of criticism of Parky yesterday for for not changing up, and absolutely, I, I think that's I think it's fair criticism. I think you go into half time, I think fans will have will have expect, expected changes there, and rightly so. I think the only the only flip side to that I would say is we have been in situations where we've been losing uh, and losing heavily in the past, and it's kept faith and it's worked out. We've we've turned it around with the players still on the field. Um, but yeah, I think I think Stockport away. You know, it, listen. You know, when we've turned things around in the past, we've been playing teams like you know Barnet, uh, and you know it's it's been sort of at home where we've sort of turned it around. Away from home, that's a different matter, and I think I think a lot of fans would have liked to have seen a couple of changes there. The the one the one criticism I think, uh, which is which is a fair one of Phil Parkinson is. His his lack of uh, a plan B, and uh, you know we've we've spoke about that, and we I think you spoke about it on this pod, and you know we've spoke about it on, on various different platforms. He he will not he will not stray too far away from that five three two or three five two or whatever you want to call it, and I think sometimes it's a bit predictable. I think uh, Dave Challenger probably looked at Wrexham yesterday. He had an absolute perfect plan 
for how to play against Wrexham and, you know, Stockport, um, you know, carried that out to, to the tee, really. So, yeah, I think maybe, I think as, as we progress as a club, as a team, we've got to try and be a bit cleverer, um, you know, when, when it comes to playing against these top, top sides. And we have to try and do something that's uh, perhaps the opposition unexpected. Yeah, I mean, Alafi made it, he got his hat-trick after 50 minutes, uh, made it 4-0, still no changes, <laughs> still we're going we're gonna to plough ahead with this, even though we're 4-0 down, but we've still got 40 minutes to go, um, and yeah, and it was one of them, and it's, you sort of feel like, you know, let, let, let's give something a go, you know, he doesn't really have a plan B, no. he, he doesn't, we know that, but... You know, when you're 4-0 down away from home and you've still got 40 minutes to go, surely that's the perfect opportunity to go, well, let, let's try this. Let's try that. He seems to always wait until the 65th minute. That seems to be his favourite time to do the changes. That is his point, um, definitely. You know, but why do you think that is? Me on football manager, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, de de definitely. I don't know. I, Sixty-five to seventy is a manager's sweet spot for yeah. making. For, it is not just Phil. That's that's a sort of manager. You, you you know you you're just over two thirds of the way through the game, um, and that's sort of your sweet spot for doing it. And yeah, for like, me, I think the two goals went in. I think he should have made a change then. Even two, you'd have gone at two. Would yeah. You? Oh God, I'm not sure about two. Like, but well, what um, do I know? We couldn't, we couldn't really, Tommy, we couldn't really get service into Dalby and Mullin. Um, and that didn't really change when Fletcher and Palmer came on um, a, a very much. Um, my question is, and again, I feel bad for asking the question, but for me, Dalby looks a little bit out of his depth this season. Is, is that fair or am I being a bit harsh there? No, I, I think it's a fair comment. I, I've I was a big, big fan of uh, Sam Sam Dolby last year. I thought um, I I didn't think uh, Ollie Palmer had uh, had the best of seasons last year. So I, I thought I thought Dolby came in at times and did really really well. This year hasn't happened for him. He has not played well. Um, you know he'll know that himself. Uh, it has not worked. And Palmer has been far better uh, this year than he was last year. It is concerning. It's concerning, and especially when you know, uh, you know, Paul Mullin is is trying to play himself back into a bit of form. That that striker, that that um, you know, that strike partnership is a concern at the moment. Whereas you know, in the past, it's picked itself. It's it's been no issue whatsoever. It is a concern. Um, so, yeah, I, I I think I think maybe we might see. Uh, we might see Fletcher start next week. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever to see F Fletcher start next week. And I think a lot of fans would be happy to see that. Um, you know, as I say, Mullin, since his injury, he hasn't regained his sharpness just yet. It takes time. We've got to be realistic about that. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. I think Sam Dolby will know himself. I think Phil Parkinson will know Dolby is not uh, at the races at the moment. And that's a concern, you know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, football is very much a confidence game. And, you know, it's a case of we were very much on top for 25 minutes. We went 1-0 down. It was a right kick in the guts, shall we say. Uh, and and, and the, the confidence drained out of us. Yeah. And the, the Stockport's confidence built and built and built. And, uh, and it was just, it was a really bad day. I mean... How, I mean, I've been watching football for years and years, but I mean, how, it still baffles me. How can a team play so well, like we did against Grimsby, and then the following week just be absolutely abysmal? I mean, it felt like we were really building to something, and it felt like another win would have really pushed us on. Is it is it mentality? Is it preparation? What what do you think it is that 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 you get that sort of drop off? It's it's such it's such a hard thing to put your finger on, and um, you know it, it made me look like a complete idiot because I was I was saying that after uh, after the Grimsby game, I was I was talking and saying this is the best Wrexham team we've had since the promotion season to 02, 03 and you know and uh, and then we turned out performance like yesterday. So yeah, I look like a complete clown, but um, but no, I. Uh, at the same time, that is football. That is football. That's why we love it. That's why you can get shock results. 
Um, that's why it's it's you know it's such a fantastic game. It's so entertaining, and that's why so many you know billions of people watch it every week. You can't put your finger on it sometimes, uh, and it, it's as simple as that. And you know, even uh, the top managers in Pep Guardiola, um, you know, he he said in after match, he said, I, "I can't understand, you know, how we've turned out that poor performance." Don't get me wrong. Guardiola's team's, uh, you know, put in a poor performance probably once every three years, don't they? But, you know, it's it, it's 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 so difficult. It's so difficult. And, and Phil Parkinson will be, you know, I guarantee he'll be sitting there and he'll be he'll be having the same conversations we're having here on, on the podcast here in his own head, you know, and he'll, he'll probably be on the phone with Steve Parkin all day saying, how the hell have we turned out that performance? That's football. It's football. Listen, you know, I, I I don't pretend to have all the answers, uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I think it, it's it's so frustrating when you know. I think um, ever since the MK Dons game, I feel like we've probably deserved to win every single game, arguably since then. I think that Swindon game was was it was a crazy game. It was a crazy crazy game, and perhaps a draw was fair there. I think you look at you look at every every other one. Uh, I think we've deserved to win every one. So at the end of the day, it's been a good season so far. I think we've put in some really good performances. Let's not get carried away about one bad performance. But at the same time, it's 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 a bit of a dose of realism for, for myself and some of the fans as well. Do you think our home form is going to be key to our um, success this season? One, 100%. 100%. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I I... I I personally don't think, I, I think maybe, you know, we're, we might lose one or two more at home again at, at the most. I, I personally think we'll, we'll make the race course a fortress once again this year, like it was last year. Um, I, yeah, I think I think you look at any side that gets promoted, unless, you know, sometimes you get sort of, you know, a freak season in which a team is, is especially good away from home. But no, I don't see that for Exxon. I, I think we'll lose we'll lose the odd game on the road, but certainly at home, uh, I think the race course is going to be a fortress. I, I think you can sort of you can wipe off that um, that MK MK Don's game a little bit. That was um, you could probably put a poor preseason down a little bit to that um, that result. But that aside, I, I I do think absolutely vital, like you say, absolutely vital. I think uh, home form, uh, and yeah, again. I, I just think we're going to be really strong at home. I, I, you look at some of the away performances. I mean, I was at Barrow. Um, it, it was it was a good performance for one half of the game, but I think away from home, we 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 do have that ability to turn in a really poor half of football sometimes, and sometimes two poor halves like yesterday. You know, I think we've got we've always got that in our locker. A bit like we talk about the Toza thing. I think Toza every now and then's got the potential to have a bit of a stinker. But on the whole, I think uh, I think really, really good. And, uh, you know, I think Toast is possibly a bit of a microcosm for the whole side there. Yeah. If, if someone would have said to you, before we'd kicked the ball this season, after eight games, we'd, have been on, we'd, we'd be on 15 points, would, would you have taken that? Yeah, I think so. I, I think that's, um, you know, I think maybe if you'd have said that to me, I'd have said I'd like a couple more, perhaps, you know, one or two more points. You look at where we are in the league, um, you know, five points off top, uh, seventh place. I think that's a reasonable start. I, th- I really do. You know, as I say, you know, I probably might have expected a couple more points, but but no, it's not a disastrous start. It's not. And, um, you know, where, you know where, where, where are we? Do, do we say, um, yeah, nine games, nine games, you said, wasn't it? You know, nine games. I always think if you can average over the course of a season, if you can average two points a game, you, you you're more than likely going to get promoted. So you know if if we if we go and win next week, that's eighteen points from ten games. You're not far off that two points a game. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd have took that definitely. So saying now, do you how do you think we're going to um, finish this season? And do you think we're going to be playoffs, top three, number one, something else, something else? <laughs> Yeah, don't don't say uh, going down or anything like that. No, come on, let's let's be positive in it now. But um, yeah, no, I, I think uh, I I've, I said at the start of the season, I stick by it. I think we we're going to be on the on the cusp of automatic promotion slash playoffs. I think that's a good season. I think it's a good season. You know, it's first season back in the league. 
I know, I know we've spent a lot of money. I know we're paying a lot in wages, but you know, I think that's a good season. I really do. If we can finish third, third would be fantastic. Uh, that'd be absolutely, I'd be over the moon with third. Finish fourth, fifth, sixth. I still, I still say that's a reasonably good season. So, um, so yeah, I'm sticking with that. I think. Now, you're going to think this is a mental question because we've only just started the season. January is a long way off. But do you think, with bearing in mind the January transfer window, do you see anywhere in this team where we might be looking to pick up one or two players? Yeah, I, I, I think maybe, um, you know, I, I, I do still think we'll bring in a striker, um, you know, who... Let, let's let's not go on about the uh, the absolute debacle that was the uh, the, <laughs> the deadline day once again. But um, no, I think we'll um, I think we, think we'll dip into to the market whether whether that's Luke Armstrong. I don't know. Uh, may, maybe we might try and you know go for a bit of an upgrade on him. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I, I do think we'll we'll try and bring in bring in a striker. I certainly do. Um, and you know, I think for where we want to be. Next season, the season after, is you know, I mean, Palmer's probably not going to be here in two years. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick my neck out and say that Ollie Palmer's not. I'd like to think Paul Mullin would be, but I don't think, I don't think Ollie Palmer will be. Sam Dolby, the jury's out. The jury's out on him. Uh, you know whether whether he can come on. You know, for for one of the, I hate this term, the journey. I uh, feel like I'm on the X Factor talking about journey, but uh, yeah, but uh, you know, it's uh, it's. I, I don't know if I don't know how far Sam Dolby can come with this. Is is the honest thing? So so yeah, I think I think we'll probably look at signing a striker who can a young striker, I would say, who can perhaps progress with the club as we hopefully go up the leagues. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Tommy. Are you okay to stick around for the quiz? Absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm a bit nervous about it, but yeah, definitely. Brilliant stuff. Well, yeah, we will come back to you very shortly for the quiz. So uh, we've got a game coming up. Another one. Crew Alexandra. Crew, Crew Alexandra. So, uh, yes, tell us. Tell so, kickoff is next Saturday on September the 30th. Yes. Um, it's our last game in September. Yes. Yes. Um, it's available for international fans only on iFollow, obviously, because it's kickoff at three o'clock, which means the media blackout. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, it's a home game. Oh, I just love home games. Um, so, obviously, we'll be at the Kairas next week. So, oh, sorry. The Sto Stoke. Stoke. Kyra. Stork Kyra. Um, yeah. So they're our closest rivals in League Two. They are in in more ways than one. Uh, bizarrely, uh, <laughs> they are uh, they are very close to us. So they're only twenty nine miles away. They are. I'm stealing your thunder a little you bit. You are by a little that. bit. They're twenty nine yeah. miles away. They are our, our absolute closest rivals yep. uh, in the league. Um, but um, they're quite close to us. In um, in league positions as well at the moment so, as well. So yeah, so yeah. they've completely sold out their one thousand and sixty five allocation. Yeah, well, it's, so. which isn't surprising really, as they're only down the road. Yeah, I mean it's you know twenty weirdly twenty nine miles. It does take them a while to get here though. It's about a fifty minute drive, um, and, and people would be wondering why that is. It's because the roads are atrocious to get from here. Lots to of Peru. A roads, isn't there? Yeah. No, not are they road? What are they? B roads, really. The, the windy tracks. B roads. B roads. Yeah. God, yeah. I'm. Terrible. Yeah. Um, so they spent their first season back in League Two last season, the 22-23 season, after being relegated from League One in 21-22. Correct. Um, they finished 13th on 58 points last season. Yeah. Um, they're very, this is, this is Ryan's very, like he says this quite a lot, they're very mid-table. Well, they are though, aren't they? <laughs> they are very mid-table because you're going to read out the, the sort of stats that they finished 13th on 58 points. Very mid table table because uh they're fifteen point they were fifteen points from relegation. Yeah. Um seventeen points from playoffs. Very mid table. That, that, yeah, isn't I it? guess that's uh, yeah. That's that's why I say, you know, if you're fifteen points from yeah. going down and you're seventeen points from the playoffs, that's very much in the middle, isn't it? Yeah, so they played Colchester on Saturday. They did. And they beat them two one. 
Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't like it when teams win other teams because it's like it just, you know, someone's especially... Got, someone's uh, more than likely going to win, I though, know, aren't they? I know, I know, but it's just... So so far this season, they've won four. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> they won four. They won four. They've won four, drawn four, lost one. They have. So they've only lost one this season. They're looking, they're looking decent, crew. I'll be honest, they look all right, um, I would say. Um, who's their top scorer? Who was their top scorer their last season? Last season it was... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Dan. 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 <laughs> it was Dan. I, I would say Dan Agai. Agai-yay. Agai 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 he scored 16 goals last season. He's not there anymore, though, is he? No, he signed for Leighton Orient in the summer. Yes. Summer transfers, so he's... Bye bye. Yeah. Um, and the top scorer this season with four goals is Elliot Nevitt. I can say that. You can say that. I can one, say yeah. Elliot Nevitt. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so we are eight, eight fifteen. We're eight to fifteen favourites, or fifteen to eight on to win the game. Is with, that good? The, with the bookies, yeah. That's we're very much favourites to win that game. Eight I to hope fifteen. So. If you were putting a bet on eight to fifteen, you're not going to get much money back on that. You'd have to put it in a multi bet. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so but, I mean, it can't be as bad as the uh, Saturday game against Stockport, can it? So, hopefully, no. let's do this. Predictions. Um, as I say, crew are doing very well at the moment. Yep. Um, they look good. They have only lost one game all season. Um um, I don't, I, I don't know if I'm completely well, honest. I, I'm, no, because you need to give a prediction. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah, um, I'm going to go for two nil Wrexham. Oh, you're sticking to your two nils, aren't you, yeah. at the moment? Yeah. I'm going to go three one to Wrexham. Three one. Yeah. Okay, get them in your phone, They're and in we'll my come phone. back to them. They're done. Uh, just a few people who got in touch before we move on to the quiz. Uh, uh, Pedavos. 85, it said, Ryan, I can remember that you were asking for a really awful player that the opposition hates to play against in one of the first episodes. You have that now with McLean, so no wonder you love him, and so do I. Nice car salesman quiz again, by the way. Who said that about the car salesman? Was it Peter? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sabungay said, look forward to this every week. You two are gems. Thank you. Colby Fired said, great stuff. You both glad you aren't too big for his common folk <laughs> after meeting the Deadpool. Did we mention that we met yeah. uh, Ryan Reynolds? Gbin99 uh, said, great episode. A pop culturist. I love how excited you both are <laughs> last week. Uh, I've watched it more than once because your passion and enthusiasm make me so happy for you Aww. and everyone connected to Wrexham. And Penny Roberts just wanted I think I should read this one. Yeah, she just wanted to cor uh, correct you that yes King Charles is the King of Wales yeah he's the King of England Wales Scotland and Northern Ireland Do you know what I go I googled this while I was in work the other day because I was having a discussion with um yeah. somebody who I work with um yeah it was I, it is true yeah but... <laughs> it's true I, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, David Middleton also uh, thinks we should vote out the council members who are slow walking the cop redevelopment 100% um, just a quick one if you want to get in touch uh, as everyone else has done it's Facebook Instagram Twitter TikTok threads or email us at me the wife and rexamafc at gmail.com uh, also quick shout out for Dragon Chat uh, it's a mental health peer support support group uh, they run a weekly zoom call on a thursday from 7 p.m till 8 30 uh, you can uh, the best thing to do is follow dragon chat dash steve lloyd on twitter uh, they also do dragon chat strollers where they meet up on a thursday yeah. morning and they have a little wander around a little stroll around certain different areas and that's different every week as i say follow them on twitter and you'll get all the updates uh, that you need from uh, that. So it is quiz time. Yes. So, uh, Tommy, are you still there? I am indeed. Yeah, still here. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Right. Quiz time. Right. So, as always, uh, it is two lies, one truth. I will read out three statements. There are five sections. Three statements, two of them are lies, one of them is the truth. All you guys have to do is pick out the truth. I will go to Sean first, yeah. and then I'll go to Tommy for their answers, and then we will determine a winner at the end. So, <laughs> here we go. Number one. It was Mark Howard's 37th birthday last week. Number one. 
Mark shares his birthday with Audrey Hepburn. Number two, Mark shares his birthday with Sophia Loren. Or number three, Mark shares his birthday with Grace Kelly. Oh my God. Sean. Uh, I'll just go with C because I have no idea. Number three, Tommy. Do you know what? I, I, it's one of them. I think it would be weird if you did know the answer. Do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, who was who was A again? Audrey Hepburn. Uh, Audrey Hepburn. Yes. Let's go, Audrey Hepburn. Okay. Um, as is quite normal on this quiz, you're both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> Sophia Loren. <laughs> Crikey. Number two. We're due to play Crew Alexandra on Saturday. Yep. We have not won any of our last 10 competitive games against Crew. Number two. The last time we beat Crew in a competitive game was 1995. Or number three. The last time we played Crew in the league, Dennis Smith was manager. Oh my God. Again, I have no idea. I'm just going to say B. Two. Number two. Or number two. Whatever. Tommy. Well, I'm going to rule out C straight away because that's definitely wrong. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go for A then. I'm going to go number one. You're going to know number one, Sean. You are correct. Yes! The last time we beat Crew, a competitive game was 1995. Number three. Episode three of the documentary uh, once again featured Rex and Band, the Declan Swans. Number one. Ben Jones is the drummer for the band. Number two, Michael Jones is the drummer for the band. Or number three, Mark Jones is the drummer for the band. 100% yeah. Ben Jones is the drummer Tom, of the band. Okay, Tommy. Yeah, well, I, I'm lucky enough to know all, know all three of them. So uh, if I got this wrong, I'd be in a lot of trouble. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for the same. It's number one. You are both correct. Yes, it is Ben Jones. Uh, number four, on Saturday, we played Stockport County. But how much attention did you pay to their badge? Oh, God. Number one. On their badge, there is one white cotton reel. Number two. On their badge, there is two blue suits of armour. Or number three. On their badge, there is three yellow diamonds. Sean. Again, I, uh, considering I did all the social media for the yeah. games and stuff, I actually can't remember. So I'm just going to go with one cotton reel. One cotton reel, Tommy? It was between A and B there on that one. Uh, I'm going to go for B. B? You're both incorrect. It's three yellow diamonds. Oh, I was going to say that, but I thought no. Because yeah. I, I don't remember seeing yellow. Yeah, there is yellow. Oh, quite a bit of yellow, actually. <laughs> uh, okay, last question. Random facts. Number one, Wrexham assistant manager Steve Parkin once appeared on Come Dine With Me. Number two, Gary Bennett is a pianist for the band The Unspecials. Or number three, Neil Ashton is the only player to have transferred from Chester to Wrexham and also Wrexham to Chester. I have no idea who Neil asked, asked whatever you just said. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with C because I can't see Steve Parkin on that, or whatever you what is combined okay. with me. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna go with three. Number three. Yeah. Tommy. See now, I feel like this is a bit of a trick question. So is is Gary Bennett? When you say Gary Bennett is a member of that band. Do you mean the Gary Bennett or just a Gary Bennett? I mean the Gary Bennett, the Wrexham legend Gary Bennett. There you go. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I've, met, I've met Gary Bennett a couple of times. Been lucky, absolute legend he is. I don't think I can't see him. By the way, he was on Come Down with Me as well. Gary Bennett's been on Come Down with Me, but I don't know if Steve Parkin has. So I'm a bit torn. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say Steve Parkin has been on Come Down with Me. Okay, right. They are all facts about one player there. So, what? Gary Bennett has been on Come Down With Me. Steve Parkin hasn't. Gary Bennett is a pianist for Scar Band The Unspecials. And Gary Bennett is the only player to have transferred from Chester to Wrexham and Wrexham to Chester. So the answer is Gary Bennett is a pianist for the Scar Band The Unspecials. There you go. I've seen that somewhere. Have you? So have I, because I researched uh... the question. <laughs> so, for once, Sean has won.
Oh, no, not for once. You've done quite well recently, yeah, thanks. actually. I'm going to throw the tiebreaker. <laughs> I'm going to throw the tiebreaker out there, even though it's not a tie. I'm going to throw it out just to yeah, see. I was, was going to say, yeah, thanks so much for like making it a tie. I don't think I've got any rights. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to put it out there. So, fan favourite Gary Bennett turned 60 last week, but how many goals did he score for the club? So, it's just the closest to the answer. Oh, um, oh, I don't know, 25. 25? Well, I don't know. Tommy, go on. Get a sensible answer. I don't, I don't think he got 100. I don't think he got 100, but I'm going to go... Uh, I'm going to go for 90. 90. So Tommy is by far the closest. He did make 100. He got 114 for, for Wrexham. Oh, fair play. Gary Bennett. So, Bye, uh, Gary. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us this week, Tom. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. No, thank you both so much. And I, I listen, keep doing what you guys are doing. We're very lucky with Wrexham at the moment to have some uh, some fantastic podcasts. And, uh, you know, this is right up there with the best. So, so keep it going. And, uh, yeah, let's hope we have something to celebrate this year, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Thank you. And thank you to all of you for listening again this week. And we'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.